Hello students, welcome to Read Med Prep Academy channel. Today in Plant Tissue Culture Part 1, we are going to discuss about the basic concepts of tissue culture, plant tissue culture techniques and types of plant tissue culture. Growing plant protoplast cells, tissue or organs away from the natural or normal environment under artificial conditions is known as tissue culture. It is also known as in vitro growth of protoplast cells, tissues and organs. In vitro is a Latin word. It means that in glass or in test tube. A single X plant can be multiplied into several thousand plants in a short duration and the space under control conditions. Tissue culture techniques are often used for commercial production of plants as well as for plant research. Here you can see a laboratory where you can see the culture bottles with the small plantlets. What are the uses of plant tissue culture? Plant tissue culture serves as an indispensable tool for regeneration of transgenic plants. Apart from this, some of the main applications of plant tissue culture are clonal propagation of elite varieties, conservation of endangered plants, products of virus-free plants, germplasm preservation, industrial production of secondary metabolites, etc. Who is the father of tissue culture? Gottlieb Haberland in 1902, a German botanist proposed the concept of totipotency and he was the first person to culture plant cells in artificial conditions using the mesophyll cells of Lamium purpureum. He is regarded as the father of tissue culture. What are the basic concepts of tissue culture? Totipotency, differentiation, redifferentiation and dedifferentiation. What is totipotency? The property of a live plant cells that they have genetic potential when cultured in the nutrient medium to give rise to complete individual plant. Here you can see the totipotency where a carrot plant is taken and a small part of the vegetable is taken as an explant. The explant is just applied on the surface of the nutrient medium and this grows into a callus and this callus develops into an early embryo and later it becomes a late embryo and this when planted in a good nutrient medium it develops into a plantlet. What is differentiation? The process of biochemical and structural changes by which cells become specialized in the form and function is called differentiation. What is redifferentiation? The further differentiation of already differentiated cell into another type of cell. For example, when the component cells of the callus have the ability to form a whole plant in a nutrient medium, the phenomenon is called redifferentiation. What is dedifferentiation? The phenomenon of reversion of the mature cells to the meristematic state leading to the formation of callus is called dedifferentiation. These two phenomena of redifferentiation and dedifferentiation are the inherent capacities of the living plant cells or tissues. This is described as totipotency. Here in this image you can see the differentiation, dedifferentiation and redifferentiation where the mesophyll cells are differentiated. And when a cellulose enzyme is applied, dedifferentiation occurs where there is acquisition of pluripotentiality. And the protoplast is prepared from the cells by dividing the cell walls. When auxin is applied, redifferentiation occurs to the protoplast. When no hormones are applied, the cells die or the protoplasts die. When oxynocytokinin is applied, there is proliferation of the protoplast into the callus tissue. Now, plant tissue culture techniques and types. Plant tissue culture is used to describe the in vitro and aseptic growth of any plant part on a tissue culture medium. What is meant by aseptic condition? Preparation of the materials free from microbes in in vitro cultures. What is cell culture? Growing of cells in vitro including the culture of single cells or small aggregates of cells in a liquid medium. What are the three fundamental principles of plant tissue culture? The plant part otherwise called the explant is selected and is isolated from the rest of the plant body. 
the explant is maintained in controlled physically environmental conditions and chemically defined nutrient medium conditions are used. What is an explant? The tissue taken from a selected plant transferred to a culture medium often to establish into a new plant is called an explant. The laboratory facilities for the plant tissue culture you must have a washing facility for the glassware and the ovens for drying glassware, a medium preparation room with the autoclave, electronic balance and the pH meter and a transfer area sterile room should be present with the laminar airflow bench and a positive pressure ventilation unit called high efficiency particulate air HEPA filter to maintain aseptic conditions. The aseptic transfer area should have a laminar airflow, dissecting microscopes, dissection instruments, a gas outlet, a vacuum facility and the sterilizer. What is the culture facility that should be provided? Growing the explant inoculated into culture tubes at 22 to 28 degrees centigrade with illumination of light around 2400 lux with a photo period of 8 to 16 hours and a relative humidity of about 60 percent is necessary. Here you can see the laboratory where the tissue culture bottles are arranged with the plantlets on the racks. What is the technique involved in plant tissue culture? Number one is sterilization. Number two is media preparation. Number three is maintenance of the culture conditions like the pH, temperature, humidity and light intensity and aeration. Number four is induction of the callus formation. Number five is embryogenesis. Number six is hardening. Let us discuss one by one. In sterilization, we must maintain an aseptic environment. Sterilization of the culture room, sterilization of the nutrient media, sterilization of the explants. Now how to maintain the aseptic environment? During in vitro tissue culture maintenance of aseptic environmental conditions should be followed. That is the sterilization of the glassware, forceps, scalpels and all the accessories in the wet steam sterilization by autoclaving at 15 psi that is 121 degrees centigrade for a period of about 15 to 30 minutes or dipping in 70% ethanol followed by flaming and cooling. Sterilization of the culture room. Floor and walls should be washed first with detergent and then with 2% sodium hypochlorite solution or 95% ethanol. The cabinet of the laminar airflow is sterilized by clearing the work surface with 95% ethanol and then exposure to UV radiation for 15 minutes. How to sterilize the nutrient media? A nutritive medium which is chemically defined is used for culturing the cells or tissues. Each chemical of this medium is known and is defined. The culture media are dispensed in glass containers plugged with non-absorbent cotton or sealed with plastic closures and then sterilized using autoclave at 15 psi or 121 degrees centigrade for a period of about 15 to 30 minutes. The plant extracts vitamins, amino acids and hormones are sterilized by passing through millipore filter with 0.2 millimeter pore diameter and then added to the sterilized culture medium inside a laminar flow chamber under sterile conditions. You can see the person working in a sterile area inside the laminar flow chamber. Now the sterilization of the explants. The plant materials to be used for tissue culture should be surface sterilized by first exposing the material in the running tap water and then treating it in surface sterilization agents like 0.1% mercury chloride, 70% ethanol under aseptic conditions inside the laminar airflow chamber. Now how to prepare the media? The success of the tissue culture lies in the composition of the growth medium, plants growth regulators and culture conditions such as temperature, pH, light and humidity. No single medium is capable of maintaining optimum growth of all the plant tissues. Suitable nutrient medium as per the principle of tissue culture is prepared and used. MS medium, Murashigi and Skook medium which was prepared in 1962 is commonly used. It has the carbon sources and suitable vitamins and hormones. Now, let us talk about the composition of the MS medium or Murashigi and Skook medium. The macronutrients that are present are ammonium nitrate, 
1650 milligram per liter potassium nitrate 1900 milligram per liter calcium chloride 440 milligram per liter magnesium sulfate 370 milligram per liter potassium dihydrogen phosphate 170 milligram per liter the micronutrients are manganese sulfate 22.3 mg per litre, zinc sulfate 8.6 mg per litre, boric acid 6.2 mg per litre, potassium iodide 0.83 mg per litre. What are the minor nutrients that are present? Sodium molybdate 0.250 mg per litre, cupric sulfate 0.025 mg per litre, cobaltus chloride 0.025 mg per litre, the iron stock Sodium EDTA 37.25 mg per litre, ferrous sulphate 27.85 mg per litre. What are the vitamins that are necessary? Glycine 2 mg per litre, nicotinic acid 0.5 mg per litre, pyridoxin hydrochloride 0.5 mg per litre, thiamine hydrochloride 0.1 mg per litre. What are the growth hormones? IAA 1.30 mg per litre, kinetin 0.4 to 10 mg per litre, myo inositol 100 mg per litre, sucrose 30 gram per litre and the solidifying agent is agar it is around 8 grams per litre. Other culture media, the media formulations available for plant tissue culture other than MS are B5 medium produced by Gamborg et al in 1968, white medium produced by white in 1943, Nitz medium which was Designed by Nitsch and Nitsch in 1969. Nobs solution. What is this? The nutrient solution used in growth experiments of plants which contains calcium nitrate 3 grams, potassium nitrate 1 gram, magnesium sulfate 1 gram, dibasic potassium phosphate 1 gram, sucrose 50 grams which is the optimal required and deiodized water about 1 liter or 1000 ml. Now what is agar? A medium may be solid or semi-solid or liquid. For solidification, a gelling agent such as agar is added. Agar is a complex mucilaginous polysaccharide. It is obtained from the marine algae or seaweeds used as solidifying agent in the media preparation. Now what are the culture conditions required? The pH of the medium is normally adjusted between 5.6 to 6 for the best results. The temperature they should be incubated at constant temperature of 25 degrees centigrade plus or minus 2 degrees centigrade for optimal growth. The humidity and light intensity, the cultures require 50 to 60 percent relative humidity and 16 hours of photo period by illumination of the cool white fluorescent tubes of approximately 1000 lux. Aeration, aeration to the culture can be provided by shaking the flasks or tubes of liquid culture or automatic shaker or aeration of the medium by passing with filtered sterilized air. Now, induction of callus. The explant of 1 to 2 cm sterile segment is selected from the leaf, stem, tuber or root and is inoculated transferring the explants to sterile glass tube containing nutrient medium. In the MS nutrient medium supplemented with auxins and incubated at 25 degrees centigrade plus or minus 2 degrees centigrade in an alternate light and dark period of 12 hours to induce cell division and soon the upper surface of the explant develops into a tissue called callus. The callus is a mass of unorganized growth of the plant cells or tissues in vitro culture medium. Embryogenesis, the callus cells undergo differentiation and produces somatic embryos known as embryoids. The embryoids are subcultured to produce the plantlets. Here you can see the callus culture when the calluses are separated in a different medium for the culturing of the callus tissue forms new plantlets. Now what is organogenesis? The process of initiation and development of the shoot or the root through in vitro culture particularly from a callus. In the images you can see the development of the root system and the shoot system in the formation of the plantlets. What is hardening? The plantlets developed in vitro require a hardening period. So are transferred to greenhouse or hardening chamber and then to normal environmental conditions. 
hardening is the gradual exposure of the in vitro developed plantlets in humid chambers in diffused light for acclimatization so as to enable them to grow under normal field conditions. Here in the image on the right side you can see how the acclimatization is done in the humid chambers. Now what are the basic steps involved in the plant tissue culture technology to sum up? A leaf portion is taken as an explant, the explant is put in the tissue culture medium and it becomes undifferentiated callus and this callus is separated into individual test tubes with the sterilized culture medium and these develop into new plantlets. Now what are the types of plant tissue culture? There are different types of plant tissue culture, one is called organ culture, meristem culture, protoplast culture and cell suspension culture. Now let us talk each one by one. Organ culture, the culture of the embryos, anthers, ovaries, roots, shoots or other organs of the plants on a culture media is called organ culture. Here in the image you can see a plant is taken, either a leaf or isolated cells from any part of the plant is taken and is placed in a culture medium and is placed in a culture conditions and the plantlets are grown after the callus formation and these plantlets are hardened and sent to the natural environment. Now what is meristem culture? The culture of any plant meristematic tissue on culture media. For example on the right side you can see the image where the older leaves are removed from a cutting of carnation and the shoot tip with the growing tip after removal of the enclosing leaves and the magnified view of the shoot tip after removal of the larger leaves is shown there and this is introduced into the culture medium and this meristem develops into a callus and this callus is individualized in a culture media to form the plantlets. Now what is protoplast culture? Protoplasts are cells without a cell wall but bound by a cell membrane. Using protoplasts it is possible to regenerate the whole plants from single cells and also develop somatic hybrids. What are the steps in the protoplast culture? Isolation of the protoplast, fusion of the protoplast, culture of the protoplast and selection of the somatic hybrid cells. Now, how the isolation of protoplast is done? Small bits of the plant tissue like the leaf tissue or the mesophyll tissue is taken and is used for isolation of the protoplast. The leaf tissue is immersed in 0.5% macrozyme and 2% Onosuka cellulase enzyme dissolved in 13% sorbitol or mannitol at the pH of 5.4. Then it is incubated overnight at 25 degrees centigrade. After a gentle teasing of the cells, protoplasts are obtained. And these are then transferred to 205 sucrose solution to retain their viability. They are often centrifuged to get pure protoplasts as different from the debris of cells. In the image below, you can see the epidermal cells. And the cells are separated to form a plasmolized cell. And the dissection of the cell is done and the destruction of the cell wall is done and a protoplast is formed with the cell membrane on the last image. Fusion of the protoplast. It is done through the use of a suitable fusogen. This is normally polyethylene glycol otherwise PEG. The isolated protoplasts are incubated in 25 to 30 percent concentration of PEG with calcium ions and the protoplast shows agglutination, the formation of clumps of cells and fusion. Here in this image you can see a formation of the protoplast from the plant cell by the usage of cellulase and pectinate. Two different protoplasts can be produced. Here you can see the parent A protoplast and the parent B protoplast. They are fused together by a chemical substance called PEG and the cell fusion occurs resulting in the nuclear fusion and formation of a somatic hybrid cell. Now the MS liquid medium is used with some modification in droplet plating or micro drop array techniques for the culture of the protoplast. The protoplast viability is tested with fluorescein diacetate before the culture is done. The cultures are incubated in continuous light 1000 to 2000 lux at 25 degrees centigrade. The cell formation occurs within 24 to 48 hours and the first division of the new cells occur between 2 to 7 days of culture. Now selection of the somatic hybrid cells. 
the fusion product of the protoplast without the nuclear fusion of the different cells is called a cybrid. A cybrid is a cytoplasmic hybrid obtained by the fusion of the cytoplasm of the cells of different parental sources. This is a term applied to the fusion of the cytoplasms of two different protoplasts. Following this, the nuclear fusion takes place. So the entire cell which is formed with the fusion of the cytoplasm and the nucleus and this process is called somatic hybridization and the new hybrid is formed. Now what is a cybrid? Cybrid means the cytoplasmic fusion of the two protoplasts. A somatic hybridization, fusion of the cytoplasm as well as the nucleus results in the formation of a hybrid called syncaryocyte. Now, cell suspension culture, the growing of cells including the culture of single cells or small aggregates of cells in vitro in liquid medium is known as cell suspension culture. The cell suspension is prepared by transferring a portion of the callus to the liquid medium and is agitated using a rotary shaker instrument. The cells are separated from the callus tissue and are used for the cell suspension culture. Here in this image you can see how a protoplast culture, this is a sum up of the events where a young plant is taken, a part of the leaf is taken sterilized and the epidermis is peeled. The peeled leaf segments are made into a plasmolized cells and the cells are allowed to mix with the enzyme and the cell wall digestion occurs and the release of protoplasts occurs and the washing of the debris is done and a pure protoplasts are obtained. The pure protoplasts are then isolated and plated on the culture medium and the regeneration of the cells occur with the formation of the cell wall and a new clumps of cells are formed which results in a disorganized tissue formation called the callus and this callus becomes differentiated into different types of the plant tissues. Now the production of the secondary metabolites. Cell suspension culture can be useful for the production of secondary metabolites like alkaloids, flavonoids, terpenoids, phenolic compounds and recombinant proteins. Secondary metabolites are chemical compounds that are not required by the plant for the normal growth and development but are produced by the plant as byproducts of the cell metabolism. For example, biosynthesis and isolation of indole alkaloids for Catharanthus roseus plant cell culture. Bioreactors in the production of secondary metabolites. The process of production of secondary metabolites can be scaled up and automated using bioreactors for commercial production. Many strategies such as biotransformation, elicitation and immobilization have been used to make the cell suspension culture more efficient in the production of secondary metabolites. Here in this image you can see a tissue explant is taken and a shoot or a leaf or a root explant or an immature fruit explant is taken and is put in a culture medium and this culture medium becomes differentiated to form the callus and embryogenesis occurs and the differentiation occurs resulting in the formation of the entire plantlet. When this is applied into a cell suspension culture, callus formation occurs and the liquid suspension culture is subjected in a bioreactor where it helps in the production of the secondary metabolites. Now, what are the different secondary metabolites and its plant resources? Here you can see in this table the secondary metabolites on the left side, in the middle the plant source and what are the uses. Digoxin is got from Digitalis purpurea. It's a cardiac tonic. Codeine, papaver somniferum. It's an analgesic. Capsaicin, capsicum annum, rheumatic pain and treatment. Vincristine, catharanthus roseus is an anti-carcinogenic agent. Quinine, which is got from Cinchona officinalis, it's an anti-malarial drug. So today in plant tissue culture part 1, we discussed about the basic concepts of tissue culture, plant tissue culture techniques and types of plant tissue culture. Thank you. Kindly subscribe, like, share and comment to channel Read Med Prep Academy. Log on to www.readmedprepacademy.com for MCQs. 
Facebook ID is Read Med Prep Academy. Our email is Read Med Prep Academy at gmail.com. Our Instagram is Read Med Prep Academy. Kindly post your questions in the comment box. We will reply with appropriate answers. Thank you very much.